everybody, Silver Picker here, and today I have an extra special video to share with you guys. Today I'm going to be answering all of the questions that you guys sent in in one of my previous videos to commemorate hitting my 10,000 subscriber milestone. I am so excited to get to these questions, but before I do, I want to show you my latest pickup. This. This is a beautiful 1985 United Nations Peace Medal. This medal commemorates the 40th anniversary of the end of World War II. It is a beautiful coin. It has the year 1945 to 1985, the 40-year anniversary number, with the dove, of course. And on the reverse, it has the United Nations logo with the word peace in a number of languages. Beautiful. In addition to that, it also comes with this beautiful lycra stand where you can display it proudly anywhere you like. Now the reason I'm showing you this, aside from the fact that it's my newest pickup and I got a great deal on it and it's worth probably about 35 to 40 bucks, if not more, as a token of my gratitude for you guys subscribing and constantly watching my videos, I'm gonna give it away to one of you lucky viewers. So stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'm gonna have details on how you guys can win this coin and I will send it to you absolutely free. So thank you guys very, very much. Now, let's get on to the questions. All right, first question. Joe Did It asks, in your experience, is it better to scrap silver jewelry or sell it? Well, my answer is that it depends. I scrap it if it's not designer or handmade or custom or anything special. If it's just simple jewelry with no interesting hallmarks, it's not worth anything above the spot value of the silver anyway, so I would just scrap it then. Otherwise, I would try and sell it as jewelry. Matthew Paolo asks, what's your favorite junk silver coin? Easy, Morgan Silver Dollars. Caleb Taylor asks, what's your rarest coin? Well, my rarest coin is the 1931 100 mils British Mandate Palestine coin. It's a key date and only 250,000 were minted. I absolutely love that coin and it is certainly one of my rarest. The Coin Master asks, how do you find so many garage sales and estate sales with silver? Well, the truth is I go to a ton of sales. For every video that comes out where I have a big score, I might go to 50 or 100 garage sales. So you're really only seeing me at my best, but the truth is there are a lot of swings and misses. Maddox Pepin asks, how did you grow your channel? Well, I grew my channel by consistently putting out authentic content that's entertaining and also educational. I try and teach people how to make some extra income by buying and selling rare coins and precious metals. The more content and the better content I put out, the faster my channel grows. Duh, right? But I have to say, for any of you guys out there making your own YouTube channels, don't forget that this has taken me almost six years to get to this 10,000 subscriber mark. So you need to put in the time and the effort to put out good content consistently and be patient. Taryn Bergeron asks, what is your opinion on silver bullion versus junk silver? Well, I believe that they both have their place, and I'll buy either, but the truth is I'm more interested in junk silver because it's much easier to sell. People know what it is. When you get a generic 999 silver round, people don't necessarily trust it. So I'd rather have something that's easily recognizable that everyone knows what it is, so I can just sell it if I need to. Lit Fisto asks, what's the oldest coin I currently have? Well, I have a French 24 Sols coin from 1727. Click on the card above to see the video where I got it. Chemical Fun 27 asks, what is the best way to find silver coins and coins in general? Well, my number one piece of advice is let people know that you collect and buy coins. Have your friends and family ask around for you. Make sure people know that you're into this and people will come to you with their coins, but make sure to pay people reasonably well so that they'll refer you, otherwise you'll get a bad reputation. SW Lego 57 asks, what's the coolest foreign coin you've ever found? Well, I think that it's gotta be the 1906P Gold Sovereign that I got at a garage sale for just three bucks. That was crazy, I couldn't believe it. Lady comes out and says, yeah, I've got a couple old coins. She hands me a little jar and says, give me three bucks for it. I give her three bucks and one of the coins was indeed this gold coin worth almost $300. Wow. Rick Flores and Jackson Moore ask, how did you get started doing this and what made you wanna become a picker? Well, it's kind of an interesting story. So, when I was a little kid, I used to collect coins, and I always loved going to garage sales. You know, who doesn't like a deal? But it wasn't until college, my freshman year, when a roommate of mine came in on a Sunday afternoon, sits down on the couch, and drops a load of $100 bills onto the living room table. I look at my other roommate, I look at him, and I go, all right, what the hell is going on? Anyway, he tells me, 
that he was out at garage sales all day buying gold, silver that people just didn't care about. This was in 2010, 2011, right when gold and silver were right at their peak. And people would sell a little broken bracelet for 50 cents, and my buddy would go and sell it for $250. Now he did that all weekend, and he came back with over a thousand bucks just in one weekend. At that point I was hooked. I told him, you have got to teach me how to do this, and teach me all of what you're doing. Anyway, over the next few months he started teaching me how to do it, and I went off on my own and started buying and selling gold, silver, and coins. And that's basically how it started. Since then, it's evolved from there. Tony Neves asks, I want to know about Home Shopping Network that sells coins. Is it a hit or a bust? Tony, it's a bust, bust, bust. Go to your local coin store or eBay for the exact same coins at much better prices. Patrick Wolf asks, What coin type or series is worth buying and worth more than the meltdown value? Well, I would say that Morgan and Peace Dollars will certainly always have a premium, and I'd say anything from the mid-1800s and back is a sure bet to have a premium over spot. Ishan Suraj asks, What resources do you think are most helpful in finding out coin prices and the like? Well, Ishan, first off I want to give you a shout out because you've been a great customer and a great subscriber and a great supporter of mine, so thank you very much. And great question eBay, I'd say, is the best barometer because it tells you what people are actually willing to pay within the last 90 days, not just what people are asking for. Another really good resource is worthpoint.com. They've been a previous sponsor of my channel and they make a really, really great database that pulls prices from all over the internet and goes back years and years and years worth of pricing data. Hello asks, when do you think silver will hit over $30 an ounce? Well, if I knew I'd be a billionaire. There are so many political, economic, and other factors that go into it, it's simply too hard to say. You know, if you make good purchases at or below the current spot, and you sell when silver goes high, and then rebuy more when silver goes low, you'll do fine. Free Going Good Times asks, when you go to a garage sale, how do you ask about coins? Well, honestly, it's a hit or miss. I'll do a full video on some of my strategies, so thanks for the idea. But basically, you gotta really read the person. Read the person and see how you think they'll react. Sammy Blade asks, Can you take a moment to speak about balancing between collecting and investing? You've said several times in the past not to get too attached to your collection, but the way I see it, collectors vary a lot in how much they want to just nerd out about historically interesting coins versus saving up for retirement, etc. So I would say in order to balance between collecting and investing, I think the best move is just to earmark certain coins for keeping and make sure that when silver hits your target price, you actually sell the other, t the other coins. This takes a lot of discipline, but that's basically the long and the short of it. Make sure you've made your decisions ahead of time. Cristoforo Colombo asks, are the 19th century silver coins junk? Well, I would say it depends on their condition and what country they're from. Generally, they'll have a slight premium though. Brandon SN101 asks, when you go to a thrift store, how do you find gold and silver and what are your tips and tricks? Another question is, how do you find estate and garage sales and how far do you go to get there? I'll do a separate video on strategy, but I can tell you that at least for the last question, I've gone up to at least two hours away for garage sales that I think are promising. Mateus Balsarek asks, Hi, do you have any problems with fake silver coins? Here in Europe, the US fake silver coins are very popular. As long as you learn to identify them, there's no problem. I've only on very rare occasion been tricked by counterfeit coins. Jackson Moore asks, What collectible coins do you think will rise in value like silver? Well, I would say, basically look at the mintages. Anything with super, super low mintages, especially things that are interesting and popular to collectors, will definitely rise in value. Trip Vantage World asks, what is the best silver to stack? Well, the answer is whatever you like best. The great thing about silver stacking is that it's part investment and part hobby. Make sure to honor both sides of that equation. Rich Goss asks, about how much cash do you take with you on a typical weekend of garage selling? He has a couple other questions about strategy, but like I said before, I'll talk about strategy in a separate video. But in terms of cash, I like to take about $1,000. That being said, when I first started out, I didn't have that kind of money to go around spending, and I would take $100 or $200, but what I'd say is take what you can afford to spend. That being said, don't go around with $10,000 in cash or anything crazy like that. That's just a crazy risk. And last but not least, Goal Rockman asks, how do you find people willing to sell coins? I never find them at garage sales. 
Well, like I said in previous answers, I have a bunch of strategies that I'm going to share with you in future episodes, but the reality is, it's just putting in a lot of legwork. You have to be willing to go to every single garage sale in your area and beyond in order to get the results that I'm getting. I'm talking every weekend, going to 50, 60, 70 garage sales or more, and most of the time, you're not gonna get anything. But it'll all be worth it for those times where you get things like that gold sovereign for three bucks. So keep at it and good luck. Well, that's about it. That answers all of your questions for the most part. Now, I will be doing more question and answer videos as I hit more milestones, so I wanna thank you guys so, so much for helping me get here. Really, you guys, I couldn't have done it without you. Now, I'd like you to do a couple things for me. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a big thumbs up, like this video, you can't imagine how much that helps me. And of course, hit me up with a comment if you have further questions or anything you'd like to ask. Hit me up in the comments below. Also, make sure to follow me on social media. I will be posting all sorts of exclusive content on there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Check me out there. Also, if you guys are planning on going out garage selling and silver picking on your own, and you need some gear to do it, go to the description box below this video and check out the links to Amazon. That's the exact gear that I use that I recommend, and if you wanna get it, get yourself some and go out there and start picking. Well, thanks a lot again, and until next time, Silver Picker out.